Your Royal Highness. I'm pleased to present our study on STEM education in Thai universities under COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Shawin Jantarase Nawong. I'm a faculty member at Department of Mechanical Engineering, King Mongkut University of Technology, Thonburi. And I'm also deputy manager of Princess Mahajagri Award Foundation. And these are my co-authors. COVID-19 pandemic in Thailand began in March, 2020, when we detected the first COVID cases. And then from the, this timeline, you can see that we have uh, some periods of low number of cases and some of the high number of cases. And if I were to superimpose the timeline onto the university calendar in the last two academic years and then um, the restriction severity, you can see that definitely the COVID-19 restrictions, the lockdown, the physical distance has definitely affected the university operation in delivering education to the students. So in this work, we collect that the data from Thai universities on how various STEM disciplines overcame these dis disruptions. The way that we collected the data is by interviewing the management and lecturers from 11 universities all over Thailand. And we were, we were happy to have interviewed president, vice president, deans, academic uh, lecturers uh, from different faculties, science, engineering, medicine, nursing, architecture uh, from, from these universities to collect all the data. So from these, uh, the data that we have, I like to present them to you in the four categories. For number five, which is the support provided by universities, I'll just include those information as I go along those four categories. Number one, classroom-based lectures. How do universities deliver lectures when the students cannot attend in person? So the obvious answer will be online lectures. Um, lectures uh, cannot be, well, they, they, they can't be given uh, in other ways, like um, the, through TV and so on. So the instructors use video meeting platforms to deliver their lectures. Um, and the challenges that we meet is that for these video meeting platforms, they, their features are sufficient for lectures. They, they can share screen, they can uh, use the videos, and it's a two-way communication. So, but it needs the feature rich nature of it requires reliable, fast internet connection uh, and supporting devices. And the devices include not just tablets, computers, but the sound system, the micro good microphone, good camera, good lighting system as well. Um, the cha another challenge, a big one is the instructors tend to teach in the same way. They don't change the mode of delivery because um, I mean, if it's teaching in person in classroom, it's, they can teach one way, but if it's online, um, it, it has to change. Uh, the, the same method of just talking and writing on the board uh, can seem a little boring sometimes and uh, you can lose student engagement. So the instructors have had to learn to use new tools, interactive tools that can be delivered through online as well. And that makes us uh, bring us to the third point, which is a digital competency of both instructors and students in order to use those tools effectively. So the support required, um, online learning workshops and trainings. So for faculty members or students or st university staff uh, who are not familiar with using all these digital tools that the universities have had to provide support, trainings, workshops. Number devices. Devices to access internet with with high speed internet access. So universities have uh, some of them have done really well with this. Um, they have gone and spent a lot of money to purchase 
new equipment, tablets, notebooks, and uh, staff and students can just borrow these devices. And they have the universities have worked with internet uh, internet provider to give SIM cards to staff and students as well. Another best practice, and I like to mention the best practice uh, that that we have found uh, related to the online learning, which is um. If, if imagine uh, there's a student after registration, he she's wondering. Where is the classroom? I mean, if uh, you know, under normal circumstance, you would just go walk to the building and there's a classroom, physical classroom, but now everything is online. So the question is, where's the classroom? So uh, many, all the universities, many universities, what they do is um, the instructors will have the database, how they would like to uh, teach. They use Zoom, Microsoft Team, Google Meet, WebEx, and so on, which can be very varied. And then um, these have to be manually sent to students, usually by emails or uh, on some social media platforms that the administration administrators uh, send to students manually, which is um, uh, takes a lot of time and work and can 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 have some errors. So at Teaching and Learning Innovation Center at Chiang Mai Universities. What they have done is they have integrated this registration with Microsoft Teams to automatically generate teams or groups where the registered students and instructors are automatically put into the same group. So there's no confusion. Everybody, all students, instructors, they know exactly where to go to meet at the first contact point in the first week. And after that, they can uh, arrange the meetings in other platforms as they see fit. So that is a, a, a very good practice that uh, we have found. Now, practical classes, how to avoid a student learning loss in hands-on practices, which is really important for STEM. Um, method one, which is uh, quite straightforward, which is a pre-recorded demonstration video. Instructors would record the video to demonstrate the experiment, which are uh, usually experiments. And then the students can see those videos and then they get a set of raw data, analyze, report. So students still get to analyze and report. The challenge with this is the making of the video. It's, it's not simple. It's not just a, put a camera there, point at someone demonstrating. They have to ch have a good camera angle zoom in uh, when needed to realize that the, the, whoever makes a video has to realize what the student perspective should be, what they want to see. The sound system has to be good. Video editing is necessary. So the support that's needed in order to make good videos, skillful technicians or instructors who have sufficient digital competency to, to, to make these videos, to edit, to distribute those videos. Of course, uh, the other supports would be they need LMS, the platform where they can host these videos uh, securely. Computer simulations to replace hands-on activities. This is another possibility. Um, the challenge that we find with this is usually computer simulations will need devices with higher specifications, therefore higher cost. Um, of course, a computer simulation will lack of human touch. Uh, so for example, medical doctors, nurses, uh, they, 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 they will lose the chance to learn empathy, talking to patients. So, so th th those will have to be uh, rectified in some way. Um, the software is could be expensive and it has to be provided. So that is a support that's needed. Uh, a good example of this is from a medical school, um, Ramatibadi Hospital. There's a screenshot of a, an example called Body Interact. It's a clinical simulation with virtual patients. So the medical students can just play around with uh, how they would use different treatment procedures on this patient. Next is um, laboratory at home by post. 
So what they do is uh, lab instructors send equipment to students to at home by post. <laughs> oh, uh, straightforward. Um, so students use these test kits and just build this along or uh, while they receive instruction online. The challenge is that this is only applicable in small classes with inexpensive equipment only. Otherwise, it's not. They just can't do big class expensive equipment tools. They just can't do it, and they need advanced planning. An example of this is an electrical engineering, uh, computer engineering class where they send these uh, logic boards and the, the logic gates to to students, and they can just uh, play with this at home. And uh, this is a com for a complete course. Internships and externship. So disciplines where internships are not as critical, they, they can postpone it uh, when the time is safer, the students can go and do the internships or change the scopes. Now for those disciplines where internships, externships are critical, essential, um, for as it is usually as part of the licensure. So of course the challenge is safety. Poten potential physical contact with COVID-19 cases. So the support is that students should be, have to be vaccinated before externship. That's especially true for the medical students. And other cases, testings for students before they go on internship when, where needed. Next is, um, I'd like to talk about the examinations. How do you universities modify assessment methods for online learning without compromising the learning outcome. So first, written examinations, midterms, finals, usually closed books. So you know, what universities have done is uh, they move the emphasis from written examination into other ways, uh, little quizzes, open book exam, group projects, group presentation, and so on. So in the case where examination are still needed. Uh, they do it on um, universities do it online. Students use the live video camera uh, where they can uh, be seen. And then the challenge is, of course, fair examinations. Uh, uh, not all. I mean, some students will tend to want to cheat in the exam, so that always happens. And then uh, the difficult thing is to balance um, to make to the universities don't want to make it too strict because the students are under a lot of stress, it affects their mental health. But at the same time, they have to be fair, fairly given. So this is uh, difficult to, to, to balance. Um, so the support needed, I mean, video platforms is needed, uh, fast internet connection again, and examination technology, sometimes available on LMS the, uh, to, to randomize the questions to random the multiple choice answers and so on. So there are some technology that can be used to make examinations easier, uh, easier to, to, to be done. Now, oral examinations and thesis examinations, uh, for the platform is easy because the presentation platform is, 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 is very simple. Uh, any platform will work. So the challenge is that usually with the thesis, research worked. Um, there are many unfinished experiment work. So because they cannot be done, they cannot go to universities to complete them in on site in, in person. So they have to change the scopes, usually reduce. And um, so what, what, do this, what do the students or uh, professors need to make this happen is uh, clear guidelines. For example, um, clear guidelines, when they can work, when the lockdown is going to be eased, or if they were to enter universities, what measures have to be taken? So these have to be clear so that experiments can be planned ahead. Another way that um, professors have gone around this is to use computational tools. So for example, um, wind tunnel tests cannot be done. So they change into computational fluid dynamics to, to, to test out this, uh, race car aerodynamics instead. And final point, soft skills, non-academic activities. 
Well, the short and not so happy answer is that many of those, almost all, are canceled in person activities. So those that can be held are all online, which is of course a doesn't do much in student character building, which is um, something that has to be rectified. But at the moment, there's no uh, substitute just yet. Um, for the online orientation, I'd like to give you a quick example. Uh, this is Mahidon University Engineering. What they've done is um, orientation. You can see that some professors are handing out T-shirts. The students are gesturing, receiving T-shirts which is a, a nice gesture. And the students actually receive the t-shirts through the post before the orientation day online. So this is uh, like the, the ceremony of giving t-shirts, which is uh, nice for the students to feel welcome. Um, and then another point, which is, is shared by many faculty members uh, that we have interviewed is that during this online learning period, it's easy to invite guest speakers, especially those high profile speakers who are used, uh, sometimes um, usually uh, more difficult to invite. For example, in this case, um, they have been able to invite the president of Delta Electronics in Thailand to give a welcome speech at the orientation, which is uh, special. So in conclusion, STEM education in Thai universities under the COVID-19 pandemic, I got a few points. The universities have shown that they can rapidly adapt to deliver quality STEM education. The online learning is the main, or maybe the only vehicle to deliver education during this pandemic. And actually I put a high emphasis on number three. In order to, for number one and two to, to happen, to be, to be possible, high level of technical skills of the staff and the students which is the, the core strength of the university that makes the whole thing possible. And number four, the universities have to identify those in need of support early and address them. For example, those who need uh, devices, those who need financial support, those who need, I don't know, mental health support. So identify them early, give the help to them. And at, um, to make learning smooth, to not to compromise quality education without any learning loss. So these are the points that uh, universities have to take. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Your Royal Highness.